Hello and welcome to my webinar presentation, Effective Communication While Working From Home. So in this presentation, I'm going to try and go over some strategies that one can use to maximize their communication effectiveness while they're working from home instead of an office. So in a post-COVID world, or almost post-COVID world, working from home is still going to be a very big thing. Lots of articles are coming out saying that lots of types of business are still reluctant to work in an office, and lots of types of workers don't really want to go back in an office when they can just as easily do the work that they do from the comfort of their own home. So what I'm going to do in this presentation is try to first go over just the key differences between working from home versus working in an office, and then try to give some strategies that one can use in order to communicate as effectively as possible when they are not working in an office with other people and are just working by themselves in a home office. So the first thing I want to cover is just the difference between working from home and working in an office. As you can see from these two photos, the main difference between the two is the proximity that you are to your coworkers, management, supervisors. When you're working from home, you cannot just get up off your desk and walk over to someone else and say, hey, can you help me with this? It's a different process for communication, and so something needs to be adapted in order to make that process run smoothly. So that's the main difference between working from home and working in an office for the purposes of this presentation. So over the next few slides, I am going to go over some various strategies that one can use in order to maximize their communication effectiveness while working from home. Now, this first strategy to limit distractions may seem like a no brainer, but Actually, it's something you really want to keep in mind. Some companies will provide you with equipment such as a laptop or a desktop computer in order to do your work. And when you have one of those, the temptation to browse the web in your downtime is much less because you know that they can monitor your web browsing and know that you are doing things that are not work related. However, most people have a personal cell phone or a personal computer, or sometimes they work from a personal computer, and the temptation to do other things while you are supposed to be working is immense. And so one thing you really need to work on and make sure you are mindful of while working from home is to limit the distractions that you have, because trust me, the more distractions you have around you while you're trying to communicate from home, the worse your communication is going to be, especially if you are on a meeting or a voice call or something with a supervisor or another coworker and you feel a buzz of your phone and you look at your phone and then you miss what they were saying to you. And then you have to kind of play like, oh, yeah, you play catch up or act like you know what they were talking about. And that's just not good communication. That's just not being a good employee. So the first thing you need to make sure you are doing is limiting distractions as much as possible. And I'm not saying you have to completely throw your phone out or keep it in the other room, but just make sure that you are only really using a personal device or a personal computer or any sort of non-work related object when you aren't supposed to be doing something work related. As I mentioned in the previous slide, some jobs will provide you with equipment to work from home, some jobs won't, but one key strategy for working from home and effectively communicating is knowing what to use. So it'll most likely be a company by company basis of what your company uses. For example, the company I work for uses Teams to communicate. So most of our communication is done via Teams, but there are different mediums for different things. So Teams is good for instant messaging, but sometimes instant messages don't always do the trick. Sometimes complications excuse me, sometimes situations are too complicated, or people are not available to talk instantaneously, or for some other reason, it's just not a good strategy. Maybe it's a time sensitive subject or something that you don't have that specific amount of time to work on and you need to put aside. So that's when other strategies such as email or phone calls or even a voice meeting over Teams or an in face-to-face -face team meeting as well over Teams 
really works wonders. So you just have to be aware that there are different strategies for communicating from home, different mediums you can use that serve different purposes. For example, if I have a really complex situation that I need to talk to my supervisor about, the most likely, most likely the form I will use to communicate with her is email. I will write out everything I need to do in an email. And it's also good because if I get distracted by some other piece of work that comes up while I'm typing that email, that email is saved as a draft and I can revisit it at any time. Whereas if I am writing something really long and drawn out in an instant message and my supervisor all of a sudden is out of the office or I get a, another thing to work on that I have to automatically go to work on, if I have a question for my supervisor about this new thing, well, then I either have to send her two messages on Teams about two separate topics, or I have to erase everything I've written about the topic and send her a completely new IM and then try to worry about that first thing I was talking about later. So it just gets really complicated if you're only using one medium and you have different projects you're working on. So just be aware that knowing the type of medium that your work wants you to use and then utilizing those various mediums in order to communicate will really help to increase your effectiveness skills. So I am good for quick situations, email, good for longer, more complex situations, and voice chat, good for situations that maybe need instantaneous back and forth or more clarification than an email chain can really give in a timely manner. So now that we've limited distractions and know the mode that we are going to be communicating with, we have to do the work. Now, this may seem like an obvious thing, like, of course, you're going to do the work. But when it comes to working from home, doing your due diligence and getting your part completed as much as possible is very important. Since you can't just get up and walk over to another desk and say, hey, I'm in the middle of this and I need some input. You have to be able to do as much as you can possibly do on your own before you start to bring other people into it or else it becomes a very complicated mess of messages and communication that can get complicated and garbled and it's just not the greatest thing. So if you can do everything in your power to try to resolve the situation on your own or at least gather everything that you would need in order to bring it to someone else, whether it be a coworker or a management person, whatever you are going to be bringing to them, make sure that you have done your part as much as possible because there's nothing worse than having someone come back to you and say, hey, before I can handle this, you need to do X, Y, Z. And when you're working from home, you have to get that done and then try to get back in touch with them. And sometimes it can just waste both of your times. So just make sure that you're doing your work before you are trying to communicate with other people when you're working from home because it just makes everybody's lives a lot easier. The next useful strategy for effective communication while working from home is keep it simple. Like this quote attributed to Leonardo da Vinci, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. When you're working from home, keeping things as concise and clear and simple as possible really goes a long way. And this kind of goes hand in hand with the previous slide about doing the work. If you've done your work and you understand, have a grasp on what you are supposed to be doing, when you bring it to someone else, if you've boiled that down and kept it simple by doing your part and understanding your part, they will be able to look at what you're working on and much easier, it will be much easier for them to help you out or make a decision or advise you or whatever it is you're needing from the person you're communicating with. If you keep your information simple, it will really go a long way towards effective communication in the workplace. And I would say that this slide here also builds off the last two, doing you the work and keeping it simple, because patience and respect really go a long, long way when it comes to working remotely from home. So by respect, I mean a couple different things. I mean, like I talked about with the simple slide, keeping it simple shows respect for your coworkers because it shows that you have done your part to understand what it is that you are supposed to be working on and that you are not bringing something to them that you have not put your full effort into. So that's one aspect of respect. Another aspect of it is 
just respecting that people are human and that they need time to analyze things and figure things out for themselves before they can maybe give you a specific answer that you are needing. So that also kind of goes along with patience, respect and patience. Don't get impatient with people when working remotely from home because they are probably doing the best they can in order to assist you. And sending multiple IMs or multiple emails in a short amount of time is not going to help the situation. In fact, it's probably going to make it worse. It's probably going to increase the amount of time it takes to get back to, to you because they are looking at all these extra emails you're sending. And if you've already done the work, then you've already sent them everything that they know in order to help you out. So you just have to wait. So patience is really a big, big part of working from home because you're not going to have the answer in front of you in the form of a physical person. You're going to have to wait for them. And so you need to be respectful and mindful of your coworkers and the fact that they are also doing things and that you're not the end-all be-all, you're not the most important person at work, you're part of a team and being part of a team means you need to understand that while you are doing your work and doing your part, other people are also doing their work and doing their part. So they may not always be able to get back to you in the time frame that you are expecting or wanting them to be able to get back to you within. The next strategy I want to highlight is a really important one when working from home, and that is time management. So when you're not under the watchful eye of a supervisor in a physical form, there can be the temptation to slack off a bit. You can say, oh, well, I have eight full hours to do this to get this done. So I'm going to, you know, look at my phone or read a book or maybe even watch TV, which I would say do not have a TV in your office if you work from home. That's a big no-no. I should have mentioned that back at the no distraction slide, but I'm throwing it in here. Time management is extremely important when working from home. I can't reiterate that enough. Do not put things off. If you have an email to send, write that email. If you have a message that you need to respond to, respond to it. Don't put things off because it's just going to make everything harder for everyone, especially if you're working with customers. If you're at home playing Tetris on your phone and there's a customer waiting to hear back from you, that's not cool for anyone and that's going to make things just difficult for everyone involved. So please manage your time well. Be aware of the amount of time that you have and don't think that working from home gives you more leeway or more time because it really doesn't. Now this slide might be a little confusing. After all, this is about working from home, which means working independently in a way. Even though you are home by yourself, you still are part of a team, whether it be your small group of team that you work with on projects or whether it mean your entire company, you're still part of a team and therefore you still have to use teamwork. So please be respectful of your coworkers and don't just treat them like information machines or cogs in a factory line because they are human beings too. And so I think it's really important to take a step back when you're working from home and realize that even though you may be feeling independent, you still want to keep up those good relationships with your teammates and you still want to utilize teamwork as much as possible. Don't think, oh, I work from home. I'm a lone wolf. I can handle this because chances are you can't handle everything yourself. You will need help. So please keep up those relationships with your coworkers. Keep in communication with them. Even if it's not about work related things, just keep a little chat going. Like I said, don't let that become a distraction, but make sure that you're still respecting your coworkers enough to communicate with them and still work as a team because one danger of working from home is teams can break down because people are working independently. So just be mindful of that and please utilize teamwork as much as possible when working from home. It'll really enhance your communication. Now, this last strategy slide may seem like a bit of overkill. After all, isn't this entire presentation about communication? Well, yes, but by communicate, I mean really communicate. Really listen closely or read closely if it's something being sent to you via a text related medium. Just make sure you're paying attention because when you're not in person with someone, it's a lot easier to miss certain verbal cues, body language, things that may help you assess a situation better in person than over a remote communication medium. So 
really make sure that you are listening closely, reading closely, paying attention to what your coworkers are saying. And if you don't understand what they mean, please reach out. If you don't understand what the tone of something was or what something meant, ask questions. You're not going to get in trouble. People will appreciate it if you ask for clarification instead of running with something that is incorrect. And also, this kind of goes along with all the respect that I've already talked about, but please ask for clarification if you don't understand the tone of someone's message because sometimes text is hard to get tone across and if someone's being matter of fact, it may seem like they are coming off rude when they are not. Trust me, I've had this situation happen to me several times while working from home. Different people have different styles of communication and some people may be more curt when it comes to responding to something and it doesn't mean that they are trying to belittle you or be rude. It's just they have a different communication style and you just have to roll with the punches. Some people may explain more than you want them to and you may take offense to that, but just sit back and realize everybody or maybe not everybody, but you're working from home. And they're not face to face with you. They're just trying to get as much information across to you as they possibly can in order to help you out. So please communicate, communicate, communicate. I can't emphasize how important it is to just talk to people when working from home. That's all you can really do. You don't have any other medium. You have to communicate with them. So it may seem like repetitiveness to talk about communication in a communication presentation, but I really think that all of working from home and effectively communicating centers around your ability to do that communication in a way that is clear and respectful to your coworkers. So to sum up all the strategies we just went over, I just want to go over them again and say we need to make sure that we're limiting distractions while working from home using the proper mediums of communication that will be as effective as possible but also within the standards of what our work expects from us. Do the work as much as you can. Keep your messages simple. Make sure you're being patient and respectful of your coworkers, whether it be of their time or of their responses. Be respectful of your own time and manage it well. Try to work within a team as much as possible in order to keep up those good work relationships that you have. And Try to make sure that your communication is as direct as possible and don't jump to conclusions or get offended or leave yourself confused if you don't understand something. Please ask questions, get clarification. Doing all these things will make your working from home communication very effective. So that is my presentation. I hope you learned some things about communicating effectively from home and I hope if you have any questions, uh, you will feel free to put them in the replies to my post of this on the discussion board. And I hope everybody has a great summer. Thank you so much.